My name is Bob Hughes. I work for SCL in the R&D department, and today I'm going to show you how to install an SCL 849 motor protection relay into a motor control center. So our job today is to replace the electronic overload relay that's been removed here with an SCL 849. Since this was already wired for an electronic overload relay, this is actually a pretty simple task because we are able to move the wires that were on the previous Brand X overload relay uh, to the 849 without actually changing the, the wiring itself. There's a couple of ways you can install an 849 mechanically into the enclosure. One is we have locations to install four screws to mount the 849 onto the back panel. The other way is to use what's called DIN rail, and that's my favorite method. And on DIN rail, you mount the DIN rail to the back of the enclosure, and the 849 just snaps onto the DIN rail. I find it easiest to remove the green wire connectors from the relay before I install it and to connect the wires to the connectors off the relay. So I'm going to remove these are the connectors for the outputs, the inputs, and the power. And then I just take the 849 and place it on the DIN rail and snap it in. And that's all there is to installing the 849 physically into the motor control center bucket. To wire the 849 into the motor control center, I'm going to follow the diagram that is given in the SCL 849 Motor Management Relay Quick Start Guide. If we look in this Quick Start Guide on the second to last page, there's a drawing here showing the example of how to use the 849 with a full voltage non-reversing starter configuration, which is the most common configuration for motors. I have made my own version of it. And in this drawing, I made a simplified version of this drawing showing the connections I'm going to make. I need to run 120 volts to the relay. I need to run 120 volts to the contact output, which operates the contactor. And I also need to run 120 volts into the aux contact input, which tells the relay whether the contactor is open or closed. I also have a connection I need to make to the contactor coil and another connection to the neutral or ground for the relay. So I've labeled all of these ahead of time to the exact terminal that I need to connect them to on the 849, which makes this very easy for me to connect this in an orderly fashion. So I want to bring these wires into B1 and B2. These correspond to the labels that are on the side of the relay. So this one goes into B2. This wire goes into B1. So I'm wiring up the auxiliary contact input from the contactor. This tells the relay whether the contactor is opened or closed. And then that just snaps in right there. The next thing I need to connect then is the uh, contact outputs, and those go to E1 and E2. So I hook up the E1 wire into this position and tighten it. And E2 goes here. If we refer to my drawing, E1 goes to a 120 volt power supply, and E2 goes to the contactor coil and energizes the contactor and causes it to close and operate the motor. All right, the last connection I need to make is for the 120 volt power to the relay. The original relay that was in here used a separately derived 24 volt DC power supply. The 849 uses 120 volts, which we're going to get from the control power circuits in the relay. We have 120 volts and a neutral available down on this terminal block on the bottom. So I'm going to introduce a new wire providing the 120 volt supply. I'll bring it up to the connector and then uh, I'll wire up the ground. So first thing I do is I hook my A2 wire, which is my neutral. I'm going to hook it in right down here and then wire into the A2 position in the connector. Wire up the A3 wire into the proper position in the terminal. Underneath the contactor, there is a control power transformer that steps 480 volts down to 120. I don't want that in the circuit while I'm testing, so I'm going to pull the fuses out for that so that I don't accidentally create 480 volts in this circuit. So we're going to go get a ohmmeter and we're going to check out these circuits and make sure that we've wired everything properly. So at this point, we're safe to energize this. 
So here's a uh, temporary power supply cable that I'm going to use to test this circuit. I need to install the white wire to the neutral connector over here. And I need to install the black wire to the terminal labeled one over here, which is the 120 volt supply. Now we're ready to plug in the relay, so we'll connect that to the wall outlet, energizing the relay. The relay does a power on self test, and then it's enabled, and the green enabled light comes on. So I think we're all ready to operate this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, SCL3421 HMI to operate this device. Uh, it uses an Ethernet cable, so we plug an Ethernet cable into the uh, back of the HMI. We plug the other end of the Ethernet cable into the HMI connector on the side of the relay. And then the 3421 initializes. And then we have these uh, start and stop buttons. So I'm going to hit the uh, start button. And that sound is the uh, contact energizing, which is exactly uh, what we wanted to happen. And now I'm going to stop it, hit the stop button, and the contactor drops out and stops. And so we have shown that the uh, contactor is wired correctly and all of our control circuit wiring is ready to go. The next thing I'm going to do is clean up these wires, uh, trim them to length, and then the last thing we need to do is run the power wires for the motor from the output of the contactor through the CT window apertures on the 849 to the motor connection terminal block on the lower right hand side. Uh, from here, the, to finish the installation, this motor control center will have to get installed um, in the MCC itself and the field wiring will be done from this terminal block to the motor itself. So in uh, summary, what we had to connect to do this is we had to connect uh, power to the relay. We connected a wire pair that goes from the aux contact input that tells the 849 whether the contactor is open or closed. We connected a output that goes from the 849 to this coil and energizes it to start the motor. And then I've got a connection to my 3421 HMI and that's all we had to do to install the 849 into this motor control center bucket.